Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts, episode 197, Gear Mechanism. All right, everybody, I'm Paige Ross, Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is where we combine 3D printing, DR electronics, and audio issues, live streaming. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we are live streaming on all the platforms. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're hanging out in the chat rooms. You can chat with us after the show at our Discord channel. The link is over there at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Want to welcome everybody a good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, we're hanging out in the Discord server as well. We'll take a look at the Discord server uh, at the end of the show and look at some projects. Quick shout out to everybody in the YouTube chat. Always hanging out with us every morning. Hello. What's going on? Revy Cherlu from Indonesia. Hello. Imagination to form. Gustavo. Boat vessel. Arjuana. Yanni. Yanni in the house, hanging out. Hello, Thank hello, you all for hello. joining us Yay, today. All righty. Cool. Well, we got a coupon code today. It's GEARHEAD. So if you want to order anything in the Adafruit shop, please use coupon code GEARHEAD at checkout to get 10% off your order. We have some really nice free deals going on. We have uh, a couple different ones. So go to adafruit.com slash free to see them all. We have the return of the Circuit Playground Express as a freebie offering. So be sure to check out adafruit.com slash free for the details. We also have same-day delivery in New York City. That's an option, really nice one if you really need your parts super fast. CircuitPython meetings happen in the Discord server, the Adafruit Discord server, every Monday at 2 p.m. hosted by Scott Shawcroft, who is uh, leading the way with CircuitPython and team. We have new letters, newsletters for the daily. That's adafruitdaily.com. Please subscribe to all the categories that you want to get a daily dose of news and maker goodness. Weekly newsletter is uh, adafruit.com slash newsletter. You can check that one out. That one's more product focused, more about the weekly products that come out. Again, Discord server, we're hanging out in the Discord server. It is discord.gg slash adafruit. Links are in the description or above in the chat, in the top chat bar up there. All right, this is this week's project. It is a reciprocating rack and pinion mechanism that we've been working on for a little bit. So this is the mechanism on the overhead. Over here is the, <laughs> you're trying to keep up with me. This is the 3D printed kit, fully assembled um, individual pieces. It is one DC motor that's in the back here that allows it to run. Um, so we're using the Adafruit Cricut and the Circuit Playground Express. To, to control the speed of the motor and the motor itself. So um, the reciprocating rack and pinion is a, a way, a mechanism to create, uh, to convert rather, um, uh, rotational motion into linear motion. So what I have here set up is um, just a really quick program that I put together in MakeCode so that I can change the speed of the motor using the onboard buttons up here. So I also have the NeoPixels light up uh, and change brightness to kind of reflect um, the power of the, of the motor. So this is what it does. Um, it it, it uh, oscillates back and forth. As the wheel rotates, it clears the track here, uh, the, the slot. And there are two tracks here. There's a top and an up, uh, upper one and a bottom one. Uh, when it reaches the bottom, uh, when it reaches the end here, <laughs> it almost bit me. Um, it'll uh, rotate and clear the top track, and then as it gets back over here, it'll clear uh, the upper track. So it just keeps going around and around. So that's the way it works. We can get it really slow as well. This is it working really, really slow. You can see in the back there, it's pushing along. Um, the motor housing is what pushes and keeps it um, secured to this, to this track. So I'm going to turn it up now. I'm going to turn it up here. So if we get it going really, really fast, um, it has so much force when it knocks back and forth that it actually moves, you, moves the whole thing. Kind of makes it look like it's moving or walking a little bit, which is pretty neat. And the eyes are hypnotic. So again, the buttons are controlling the speed. Um, every time I push the button, it decreases or increases uh, the, the, um, the speed value by 10%. So we can get it going pretty slow here. 
And same thing with the NeoPixels, as they get brighter as we go um, higher and faster. So that's it in a nutshell. Rather difficult to put together um, in the beginning when I was prototyping it. Speaking of which, uh, this is actually a project that is inspired by Ron Walters, uh, Reciprocating Rack and Pinion. So if you guys ha have heard of Ron Walters, he does some really fantastic woodworking. And one of his earlier projects was this very similar Reciprocating Rack and Pinion. It's actually a lot bigger in scale, the one I'm showing here. Um, it's, it's much bigger, it's made out of wood, and it's using a different type of motor. Um, so here, here is Walter kind of demonstrating it. And he, he walks you through how he kind of built it too out of wood, which is really neat. Um, so that's where the kind of design was inspired from. So I, I took uh, hints and, and um, notes on the design of that one and scaled it down and made this version that's 3D printed. Originally, however, though, we were actually going to uh, r rather, the original idea was to create it out of chipboard. So we have uh, a vinyl cutter here, which is a, a Cree-cut machine. It can cut different types of material, including chipboard, which is like a, th a thinner piece of cardboard. Um, so we were um, seeing if we could cut gears and teeth out of this chipboard using a vinyl cutter, because it's actually way faster than 3D printing. When you're cutting material, uh, d if you're making big, large pieces like we were here, you can cut out pieces from chipboard with the vinyl cutter in like a minute, under a minute, you can cut out a bunch of different pieces and then stack them together to get the desired thickness of whatever you're making. In this case, um, we were able to kind of get a prototype working here, um, but it, it just kept, I kept running into friction issues. So the surfaces would mate with each other and they would kind of uh, grind and, and, and kind of strip. So this is what I was able to come up with in the very, very beginning, this was about a month ago when I was prototyping it out of chipboard. Um, I could get the motor to uh, move the track, but I couldn't get the, uh, the, the wheel to move and, and, and keep the track static. It would just lock up and jam up. So this is the movement that I was able to get uh, with just chipboard and a 3D printed drive, hu uh, drive hub. And then I'm just using a pan device to kind of keep the, the, the mount uh, elevated. So that was the original prototype. Um, as soon as I started 3D printing the track and all the pieces, everything just started working together and started working a little bit better. And then I did some more iterations and things like that uh, to get it really nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Adafruit Learning System where we can take a look at the full guide and tutorial uh, and the documentation for this project. So I got a nice little video that explains the mechanism and um, um, the code and stuff like that very, very kind of quickly as an overview. Uh, but this uh, guide really breaks down all of the things, all the steps. Um, so again, shout out to Ron Walters uh, for uh, sort of the design inspiration, so I have it linked there. The parts used in this project, as far as the electronics, uh, it's pretty simple. It's just the circuit player and express with the Cricut and one DC motor. To power everything, we're using a AA battery pack. This one here has the built-in uh, 2.1 jack that plugs directly into the uh, Cricut board, so it's really nice. Um, I'm using alkaline batteries as well, because uh, the regular alkaline batteries can pump out 1.6 volts, as opposed to like the 1.3 volts that a rechargeable battery does. You're going to need some hardware, so um, because we're securing a bunch of uh, pieces together, we kind of need some long screws. Um, so uh, the longest screws are 20 millimeters long, and we also need some short screws, which are six millimeters long. They're all listed here in the parts list. Um, they're M3 size, they're metric size machine screws. I also have some extra things like uh, a threaded insert. Uh, these are the brass knurled type for uh, doing heat press inserts into the 3D printed parts. I also have listed here a metric screw tap. Uh, I really like using screw taps uh, to kind of create threads um, in, in 3D printed parts. It really was essential here, especially since uh, we're, we're kind of screwing through a bunch of PLA. Um, so uh, definitely screw tap helps out a lot. Prerequisite guides in case people are new and haven't uh, worked with the Circuit Player and Express or the Cricut or even MakeCode, uh, we have those learning guides uh, as an introduction um, here. So if anybody's new to this and they want to get started with that, they can. They're all linked there below. So that's the overview page. 
Talking about 3D printing, um, there are a lot of 3D printed parts here. Um, here's a nice parts list with the name of all the files and what they do, and what they're used for. When it comes to the colors and the filaments that I use, they're actually all from Melt Ink 3D, which is one of our favorite suppliers, manufacturers of filament. Um, all the colors are listed here. We carry just about every color of filament in the Adafruit shop, except for orange and yellow. So if you want to get those, I have them linked to uh, the Melt Inks website so if you want to use those colors, but you're feel free to use any color that you like. When it comes to slicing the parts, um, I, I like using Cura. It's a free piece of software from Ultimaker. It includes several printing profiles um, that are really nice. Uh, so the, the slice settings that I use, they're pretty simple and, and um, listed there. 0.4 nozzle with a 0.2 layer height and a 0.38 line width. Uh, with a 60 millimeter uh, printing speed. So pretty standard stuff, nothing too special about printing. You don't need any support materials or anything like that. Um, the STL files are what you want to download if you want to 3D print them. This one's a little different. I actually have them uploaded to GitHub. So I have a GitHub page with um, all of the, uh, the files and the source files as well. So if you want more than just STLs, if you want the step file, you want to use it in um, Onshape or uh, SolidWorks, you can use the step file and get access to um, the original models, the original sketches, all that sort of thing. The Fusion 360 file contains um, the par user parameters that, that drive the dimensions of the thing. Uh, it also uh, includes the animations. So there are animations, there are cat animations that are all associated with that design, and it's all part of there. Uh, the, this is all within the Adafruit Learning System Guides repo on GitHub. So it's adafruit.com or github.com slash adafruit slash Adafruit Learning System Guides. That's where all of the kind of code and files live for all of the guides that are in the Adafruit Learning System. This one is called the Rack and Pinion Bot, which I have linked below and, of course, in the guide here. So you can get them from GitHub or you can get them from Pinshape or Thingiverse or Umagine. Any of those repo sites are really nice. I like GitHub because I can push commit to them really quick and easy so I can make quick uh, kind of files. <clears throat> so the design source is again on GitHub as well. As I talked about it, it includes the animations for everything. The step file also links you to that as well. So I have it linked in two different places here. The cat assembly, I made, this anim I made two different animations, one to show the track moving and another one to show the cat assembly. So this shows all the hardware kind of broken out and exploding and all the pieces kind of fit together. So uh, that's the CAD animation. The Cricut Mount is a standalone project that we did a couple weeks ago. That is a standalone uh, guide. So if you want that, that is linked in that guide and linked in the description as well. So if you want to just make the, uh, the Cricut Mount, um, you want to 3D print that, here is the, the guide on how to do that and all the files. Uh, bears repeating, if you go back to that font, the uh, guide that oh. all of the mounts as well are linked in that project file. So if you want a Lego mount, if you want a battery, if you want a little uh, camera Sorry, mount, yeah, yeah, so yeah. all of the different uh, modular bottom mounts for the, that right. case are linked there. Exactly, and I'm using the battery one in this one. If you don't have a 3D printer, definitely check out a 3D printing service like 3D Hubs. One of our learning authors and contributors, Kirby, actually has a 3D Hubs and he's done several um, orders, several Eddy for projects. So a lot of people actually don't know that you don't really need to own a 3D printer in order to tackle one of these projects. You can just send the, um, the parts to be printed by a local manufacturer, a local hub like, uh, like Kirby. So uh, check out 3D Hubs. Um, all of the files can be sent there. You can download them or you can use the Thingiverse. I think there's a button right on Thingiverse to, uh, to purchase um, parts from 3D Hubs. So you can check that out. All right. And we also stock 3D printers in the shop. Here's Ultimaker, one of our favorite printers. Let's jump into the software section. So for the software, we're using Microsoft's Make Code to program the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express and the Cricut. Uh, so Adafruit, uh, so uh, Microsoft's Make Code is a uh, is a IDE a programming editor that runs in Google Chrome. It's a uh, really intuitive interface. There's, not, um, there's no syntax to learn. It's more about just kind of an interface that has code blocks, and you drag and drop them and, and create um, sort of node-based uh, programs. So if anybody's new, uh, the first section kind of walks you through to setting up the Circuit Playground Express uh, with MakeCode. Um, so if you've never done it before, that's the section. 
And then setting up the Cricut extension for make code is as easy as just clicking the extension to install it. Um, that includes all of the code blocks for um, using motors, servos, and stepper motors, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, so you can quickly download that. The make code project is uh, available to modify or, or not really download, but it opens in its own tab, and you can modify it and bring it into your um, make code uh, instance. Uh, just by clicking on that link. So click on that link and hit the edit button, and then you can start manipulating and testing things. Um, but the program at a glance, uh, what it's doing is that it uses a motor block to control the speed of the motor. So when uh, the button A or button B on the circuit player express are pressed, it'll, it'll decrease or increase um, the motor value, the motor speed. Um, so we can also change the brightness of the NeoPixels um, when you press any of the A button or B button. So you have, your, you have the freedom to kind of change it up however you like. The, we're using variables uh, to, to really set up our motor brightness, our motor, our motor speed and our new pixel brightness. So we're using variables. Uh, when you create a variable, um, you're basically naming something. So in this case, it is the motor speed and the brightness. Um, so you can, uh, whenever you create a variable, you get um, two different blocks that are associated with that variable. You can either set that variable to a value or you can change that variable by a value. Um, so with those two um, variables, you can set or change uh, values to a variable. In the forever code block, um, we are just kind of establishing um, what we want to happen in our code. So we want the motor, the Cricut motor to run at the motor speed, and we're asso associating it to channel one. And then below that, we're setting the brightness for our NeoPixels to be the brightness variable. So that's all we're doing in the forever loop. On start is when we first boot up the Cricut, what do we want to happen? Do we want brightness? Do we want NeoPixels to turn on? Do we want the motor speed going at a certain speed? We can do that using the set brightness code block and the set motor speed code block. Here on, on start, I want my NeoPixels to be off, so I'm setting them to zero. But I also need to set up what color I want the pixels to be. Even though they're off, I still need to set what color the pixels to be. So in this case, I'm making them green. I want the motor to start slightly, kind of have a little bit of power, so I'm leaving it at 20. So that's just kind of like a fudge factor there. Then the, the kind of on behaviors when the buttons uh, are being pressed, this is where you can use the on um, the on code blocks. So you can say when on button A, when it's clicked, I want this to happen. On button B, when it's clicked, I want this to happen. So that's what I'm, I have set up here. And we're using the change code, the, the change variable code blocks uh, to uh, incrementally change uh, or really append or subtract a, a value uh, away from the total value. So in this case, whenever we press the A button, we're going to increase the motor speed by 10, and we want to increase the brightness by 25. Now, the motor speed maxes out at 100, and the NeoPixel brightness maxes out at 255. So that's why the brightness has a, a the increments are 25 to kind of catch up to the motor speed. But you can play with the numbers. Uh, and then the B, um, the button B has them set up uh, as a negative value. So if you want to decrease the speed or you want to decrease the brightness of the NeoPixel, you can use a negative value. So in this case, we're using negative 10 and negative 25. So that's a sort of an overview uh, of the code blocks. Um, you, again, it's a, you, can, you can download it and try it out yourself. There's also an online simulator that you can use. So if you don't have the Circuit Playground on hand, you can still play around with the separate programs and everything on your browser, which is really cool. So check that out. It's the software page. Then it comes down to the assembly, so putting everything together once you have your Cricut programmed and installed and ready. Um, then it's time to uh, assemble all the parts. So the first thing I'd start, I would start with is the motor box. Uh, so the motor box, the motor has a housing that is secured with these two long screws. And a third screw uh, is inserted through the tab, and these hex nuts kind of keep it secured in place. The drive hub is two different pieces. And there are some screws and, and nuts and a heated insert that you'll need to assemble that whole little sub-assembly. Heat press, I haven't really 
uh, use this technique a lot in any in, uh, in a lot of my projects. And any this is probably the first one where I've used it. But I've seen a lot of people in the community use uh, heat pressed threaded inserts in their 3D printed parts to get really precise and accurate threads. Uh, instead of having to use a, uh, a, a screw tap, you can you can use the tip of your soldering iron to heat press a threaded insert into a hole, a mounting hole in your 3D printed parts. You got to be careful though with it. I did ruin one of them where I, I uh, the tip went too far and like PLA started melting. And you got to be kind of careful with it. There are some jigs and things that you can you can uh, uh, build for this type of technique, uh, which I'll probably look at the more I use it, the, the more we'll see if that makes sense. But it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so the threaded insert, you want to test it, make sure it's nice and inserted. Maybe print two of them, two of these pieces in case you've never done it before. I would print two of them in case one fails. You kind of want to back up. So uh, yep, just making sure that that one's uh, pressed in as straight as possible and nice and flush. Securing the hub to the pin um, using two small screws and some hex nuts. This is just really to avoid support materials. I could have printed it in one piece, but I wanted people to be able to print them separately. Um, so if, let's say, the tolerances are too tight for the, for the shaft of the motor, you can modify that and reprint it instead of having to print the whole subassembly. So that's really cool. Installing the motor, uh, inserting the drive hub into the motor, it just press fits. It really needs to have a tight tolerance. Um, so it's one of those balancing things where like if it's too loose, it won't stay on. If it's too tight, I can't take it off. So you got to work with that. Um, but here's what the assembled motor box looks like. Once we have the, uh, the actual uh, housing mounted and the drive hub attached to the motor hub, that's really it. There's no glue needed for any of these parts. Um, so that's really nice. Onto the track assembly. Um, these are 25 uh, millimeter diameter googly eyes or one inch in diameter googly eyes. They're kind of a little bit bigger than your regular googly eyes. Um, so you can pick up those from Amazon. Uh, layering the tracks, you really want to make sure that the mounting holes all line up properly and you want to make sure that they are indeed um, tapped with the, with the tapping, with the M3 tap. So these holes uh, are a little bit tighter than 3 millimeter to allow you to create those threads with a screw tap. Um, so again, can't iterate, you definitely want to make sure that all the holes are lined up. There were some parts where I had it had you can kind of see here, if you see my mouse, right underneath this eye, you see that hole there? That was an accidental. I had it lined up backwards and I drilled through the base, uh, which I wasn't supposed to. So even I can make mistakes, of course. So um, yeah, just make sure that your, uh, your mounting holes are all lined up and in the same spots and uh, that you can, I, I would test uh, screwing the, the, the screws first before like just driving them all together because I ran into uh, where I would melt the screw hole because like, I'm using an impact drill and it would just go so fast it would like melt the hole. So be careful with that. Be slow and steady. When it comes to the stand assembly, um, it's kind of neat. These tabs just kind of sandwich in, uh, well, not really sandwich, they kind of group, uh, they kind of clip onto the, um, onto the three plates. Uh, and it's secured with another screw, with like a really long screw, 20 millimeter long screw, uh, and two of them. <laughs> So that's pretty simple. I, I like the stands. When I first made the stand, like it didn't have the web feet, but then looking at it, I was like, this has got to have web feet. <laughs> so web feet, great feature. The motor wheel assembly. Um, so, you know, the wheel actually has some little, s these little raised uh, concentric rings. And what they do is they kind of elevate, they kind of elevate the wheel away from the base. Because if they, if they weren't there, the whole wheel would grind up against the base, the backing of the base, and you would have all this friction. So that's why those rings are there, and that's why I had to 3D print this as opposed to cutting it from chipboard. There's also a hexagon shape. There's a recessed hexagon shape, and that keys into the hexagon shape on the spindle of the drive hub. So that's how these things kind of lock together. Uh, in this photo, the heat, the heat insert isn't the heat pressed insert isn't apparent there because I forgot to do it, um, but you'll need that there. It is here in this photo. Um, so that's the way that works. So um, you want to line those up and then just uh, heat, uh, press fit them together. And then you can insert uh, a machine screw, a small one, 
to secure the wheel to the threaded insert in the drive hub. So that's the way that that works there. That way it doesn't pop out. And then you want to test the track before um, moving forward. So testing it, making sure that uh, the wheel is nice and flush with the pin, I mean with the spindle, and that the, uh, the actual um, pin can uh, move along the, the slot in the track. So when it comes to motorizing it, it's as simple as uh, inserting the motor wires into the screw block terminals, using the motor section of the Cricut board, using uh, channel one. There are two channels in the motor section. Um, you want to have the positive connection on the far outside, and then all the grounds go on the inside. So that's how that works. Labeled as well on the PCB. Um, so the last part is getting the, you know, the motion to be really smooth. Um, that was really hard to kind of uh, figure out, but hopefully with all of the features in the parts and um, all the heated, the heat press insert really helps keep this thing secured. Um, and all the little design geometries kind of give it enough uh, clearances so that it can move smoothly in the track. Um, so that's the learn guide in a nutshell. Uh, as if we were to read it, there's there's more details and stuff, but I'm just kind of walking through it pretty quick. So that is our reciprocating rack and pinion. He's trying to get away from me. Yeah, Yanni was actually saying if the motor hit one of the legs for it to walk around, pretty cool idea. Oh wow! Yeah, Run away from cool. you. Yeah, that is a good idea. Position. Yeah. And uh, imagination form, just saying, uh, making a nice little rig for doing the heat pressing of the inserts. Yeah, I see a really cool rig from Technology on Instagram. I'm asking if he was if he was making like a learn guide for it. I'd love to share that. And build yeah, think, one. Um, he might do it. I think. Yeah, we'll I think see. one of the comments was also to like limit the how far it goes down. Yes, and I think it has his... to limit how far because mine went way too down, and I ended up. The tip, you know, touched some plastic and lifted the plastic up and then oh, messed yeah. up the whole heat insert and got liquid PLA inside the insert, so it was mm -hmm. completely unusable. It was a mess. It's and a messy. It's other messy other comments on having like a timer for the heater too. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. We got Matt Lamb from Facebook saying that the noise really makes me think of a clock with seconds ticking away. Some interesting possibilities there. Yes, that would be a really neat clock. A desk clock. And then other comments on some products that we should probably look at in stocking. If anybody has any links to really good Yes, yeah, so we're always looking for stuff to stock in the store. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any great links, you can this share. This one particularly was on IP, uh, what is it, the water rating, IP67 enclosures for the three color e-ink displays for outdoor use would be really cool. Ooh, get a, save these links out, would you? No, 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 I'm, I'm asking if anybody has oh, any okay. links for okay, cool. uh, really cool products to check out. Hey. Don't forget this week's coupon code, GEARHEAD, to 10% off your order. Yes. I'm gonna buy any of the crickets that are finally in stock. So yeah. you can play around expresses, Let's check it out. the TT motors, wires, battery holders. We are back in stock with the Cricut. Yay. And the Circuit Playground Expresses are also in stock. Maybe we'll have a kit one day where we sell the CPX and the Cricut together. But for now, you gotta buy them separately. The Cricut does come with the bolts and things that you need, but we also sell the bolts separately if you want a second pair. Pretty nice. All right, these are the parts in the shop. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's, what are we prototyping? Uh, we're gonna do, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do, we'll do prototyping. Pedro's gonna take it away and share with us his guy next. Guy goes to sleep. <laughs> his next creation. Let's jump into Fusion. We're gonna take a look at this. So, with a lot of things that have come into alignment with printers, bigger printers, dual extrusion that we finally got our hands off on. Uh, Cricut being able to power a lot of these um, components, lights and sensors, gears that we're working on, we can finally start working on the Guardian blade saw. So I mentioned this about last year when we released the Guardian Sword, the very popular Guardian robot. 
Yeah, that so this would probably be the next one we would work on, right? Yeah, this is from Zelda, Breath of the Wild. It's and some... it's a really neat piece of kit here. The, 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 the ancient blade saw, as it's called in the game, is a giant two-handed melee sword mm -hmm. that has moving parts in it. It has, it's basically a chainsaw that's on a blade and the blades are actually lit up and they're glowing. This is a NeoPixel sword to the finest. Um, really crazy. So we're gonna have this giant chainsaw um, rotating, rotating teeth in a wheel. Going around it with the wheels. We're yeah. gonna have the little DC motor pushing. Another gear that'll rotate all of the Ninja Flex uh, little gear teeth. So we can illuminate those with the, um, the lights that are on there. Yep, and so we took screenshots like. from the game. Um, laid it out. Laid it out here. So it's got a lot of details to it. It's fairly large. For the handle, we plan to use a PVC pipe of sorts. I think I'm going to use the dowel, actually, because I dowel. don't believe I need to actually route any of the power to the... Um, Excellent, okay. ...to the, uh, what's it called, the handle. That's I don't right. think it glows. I'll take, a look and take another look at it, but I don't believe that little thing glows. I'm trying to make it as accurate as I can with the way that the lights are all illuminated on this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be dual extruded with the option to, of course, print these out separately so the LEDs can shine through just like the Guardian Sword. Then we have the Cricut mounted on there with the CPX on top. We have a little speaker so we can have some chainsaw noises. The uh, triple double A battery holder or DC motor down here. And the uh, Ninja Flex blade teeth will rotate, or uh, will be rotated by a gear up here, main gear for that. And then that'll in turn rotate the bottom. Uh, I don't know what this thing is called, but it looks so it's cool. A bit, it's game. a bit like a turntable then. It's like a circular drum that's, yeah. that keeps rotating. Mm -hmm. So that should rotate like that. Yeah, that we'll be using, center. yeah, just a DC motor. Mm -hmm. That'll be pushed by that. Yeah. Of course, there's constraints on it, so you can't rotate it. That's fine. And of course, um, other pieces will be uh, like tacked on to the top of that, so we won't need as many support materials for any of this, since I am going to be using the dual color for the transparency on this, mm -hmm. just to make my life a little bit easier. We'll be using the large size of the Ultimaker S5 to fit about half of the body in there. I think that my bed references for that. Here's you can see how this will be split up. Just two pieces? Two pieces for the ultimate. Of course, uh, I'll give Probably you guys the four, option. Because it's split in half. This up. Yeah, yeah four pieces. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, forgot about that. Yeah. Well, the other mm -hmm. thing I like is the standoffs are they're like reinforced. They're thicker than yeah. the original so Guardian Sword. I wanted to use like metal issues. or brass uh, standoffs for that, but because of the custom size, it, I'm just going to make them thicker. Yeah, make them thick. We're also going to be using the 0.8 millimeter nozzle to speed up a lot of this, so it should dramatically oh, cut so down. The feature should be a lot thicker as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And the only challenging part is seeing if the DC motor is able to have enough power to rotate all of this. Should yeah. It's only like about a millimeter thick for the blades. Mm -hmm. um, these are all connected, will be all connected with uh, either uh, 175 mil Rivets, sort rivets, of DIY rivets. Or uh, filament, mm -hmm. or the uh, or new little or thread like. inserts with like an M2 screw or something like that. Yeah. And then we got these little posts here that'll hold these, um, I don't know what the size of them are, those new little bearings that we've been playing with. The, okay. I mean, so they're cool. ball bearings? Just because um, one of the advantage of these is that I don't have to make the posts that actually hold these so small. Yeah, I really like these ball fatter. bearings. They're uh, 15 millimeter uh, diameter. Yeah, diameter is 15 millimeters. The inside so diameter the is about camera? five. Can't see this. You can't see. You have to switch it. Oh, here. Mm -hmm. Swap that over. All right. Let's see. You want the E? Yeah. So we're we'll be using these to help provide the rotation for the uh, the wheels and to also provide uh, as least friction as we can on the actual blade teeth. So what I like about this is the large opening uh, so we can make a really uh, you know thick yeah. uh, diameter sized um, insert for this so they can go inside of. 
as opposed to having it so small like you yeah know, these that's a great right look how it's thinner it is too it's not as yeah thin. it saves a lot more a lot uh, in terms of size for this like four millimeters tall mm -hmm. i forget what the size of this one but it's, uh, it's a little bit more yeah we use this ball bearing uh th a shout out to greg zumwalt uh, oh yeah he's uh, he used this in his two slow boat the, the rubber band propelled boat. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the bearing we used in that project. It works out really well. We got a pack of 10 of them for like 10 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this will insert into the very standoff so that it'll be screwed yeah. in so that the uh, gears can go over that. There won't be any friction on that. So you jump back into the fusion file. Yep. Let's see what else we can go over. We got working so far. I think the next steps that I need to model in are not where they. No, I just did the mounts for the motor. These are heavy too. Standoffs for that. Speaker has already been put in there. Speaker. I think it's actually ready to start printing. <laughs> I actually just need to start slicing this guy up, add the tabs that'll connect the pieces together. I will be looking at some of the modifications that people did with the uh, ancient, uh, the guardian sword. See okay. how much thicker they made the tabs. Try to make this a little bit more Tent. easier for people oh, to yeah, print yeah. out, yeah, so, so they're yeah. not so thin. And yeah, this will be I don't know, about a month away from now. Yeah, give or take. Let's get it. Guardian uh, saw blade. Blade saw. Blade saw. <laughs> it's saw blade. backwards with the uh, <laughs> the cosplay name. Yeah. Props. This is super cool. Um, Gun blade. Hopefully you blade guys saw. like this one as well. Stormflower. Cool, well this is really cool. Um, all designed in Fusion, we'll release the files uh, once yes. we get there. Mm -hmm. And um, you do a quick measurement of how tall it is, how long it is rather. Mm -hmm. You gotta include the, uh, that part too, yeah. since that's what the, say the, the this dowel edge. will actually slot so, into. Yeah, it'll be kind of hard there. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so it's somewhere around 600 millimeters long, mm -hmm. not including the handle, so probably like 700, maybe even um, 800. Yeah, I, I think I sized it to 860 millimeters, so it should be about as big as the Guardian Sword. For reference, it's about yeah, that big. Long. Yeah. yeah. Of course, uh, breaking out all the USB, uh, uh, the USB port on there will be broken out as well. Oh, yeah. Be able to see There's that also at all. some, yeah. So the overhead. Uh, I There's mean, also some neat. You don't um, really need to, You've already yeah. seen this before. If you can jump back over to the, over, to the um, screencast, inside of Fusion, you can see where that'll route into. So just be using one of the panel mount micro USBs, and it'll break out on, yeah, that. There's like a key or something that's in the game. Oh yeah, you can actually turn that problem. on. Yeah, I've not There's like completed a key that yet. Or it's something, like yeah. just for maybe that can there. have an on button or something inside of it. That would be know. cool. Yeah, you turn it a certain way. We are just on it. It's just the button on the key. Yeah, it doesn't have to actually move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't even think about the on and off switch yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's com There's still a good amount to to work on, but. Mm -hmm. For now, the shape, we can start printing it for getting an idea of how it's going to change. Sizing yeah, size and, and see if the dual extrusion stuff uh, works out as clean as we hope. Yep. So that would be about a month away, something like that. Seeing how fast these uh, bigger nozzles are able to pump these out. Yep. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Yep, again, this is the blade saw from Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's an ancient sword from the ancients of... Chica land. Yeah, check it out on YouTube if you want to see yeah. what it looks like in action. It looks super cool with yeah. the blades going, obviously. And mm -hmm. it is one of the most uh, best uh, uh, swords yeah, to huge... use on the Guardian, uh, the ancient Guardians, right? Yeah, it is. Any so, ancient sword, it's any ancient weapon. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> that's cool. All right, so that's what Paige is working on. And... Uh, there's some other things in the background, but as we get to them, let's jump into shop talk. We got some shop talky news to talk about, right? What was in the news? All right, cool. So um, first thing I want to talk about is our GitHub models on GitHub. I put a blog post up on the Adafruit blog. This is uh, the new 3D models that we put up on GitHub. This is the M4 Adafruit Feather M4. 
And this one's a little fun one. This is a free model that you guys can use in your projects. Uh, the STLs and the step file are available to download from the GitHub page. They're all linked here. This one's really cool because it's using um, Eagle CAD. This is directly from Eagle because Lamar uses Eagle to design her boards. There's a new feature called Fusion Sync, which will take your Eagle CAD design and make it 3D. It'll take it and make it 3D in Fusion. You can do a little bit of steps here and there, but you can import parts into your model. So, you know, when you when you bring in the Eagle CAD, when you when you create a Fusion file for the Eagle file, um, you can tell it what models you want to use. So in this case, I picked a micro USB and a JST connector. Um, but uh, the Fusion Sync feature generated all of the silk screen and the traces all for me in, in the, uh, as a decal inside of Fusion. So it's really cool, really nice way to kind of get uh, a quick model if you already have the parts modeled. I might do a tutorial on that. Um, as I use it more, I'm still learning it. There's some other models that we uploaded. They have a 5-volt stepper and a, a 3 AA battery pack that we have as well. And um, here are them linked in the, in the, uh, in the GitHub page, which are all a part of here. Um, we have, we're, we're building up a nice collection of um, components that are modeled in 3D, available in STL and step format, so you can use them in SolidWorks, Onshape, um, and any other CAD package that likes step files. Um, there's a bunch of them here, and we're adding them every week. Um, so if you're looking for the Cricut board, the Circuit Playground, the feathers, batteries, joysticks, you name it, we probably have them modeled here. So there's a lot of them there. All right, another thing we want to talk about uh, in the Shop Talk segment is that we actually updated the Mate Code Learning Guide. So Lamar, Mike Barella, and myself uh, put together this page dedicated for uh, web USB uploading. So um, a lot of folks are starting to use Mate Code for their projects in a classroom setting, and we really want to make it easier for these folks uh, to be able to prototype and iterate their programs. So a lot of the times what happens is you'll, uh, you'll change one value, you'll change it again, you'll end up dragging and dropping those UF2 files many, many, many times. It, w with this web USB, you just have your, your, uh, your Circuit Player and Express plugged in via USB, and then you're uploading via the browser. No more dragging and dropping the file. It just uploads directly to the board through web USB because Google Chrome has this web USB feature. It's only in Google Chrome. So we have this nice page that walks through, you know, setting this up. It's actually fairly easy, but if you haven't done it before, um, this guide will walk you through it. Perfectly. So if you're new to make code and you want to uh, upload your code quicker, definitely check this out. It's just a link. There's no other extra stuff that you have to download or install. You just use this beta link, and we have a link here and here as well. And then these GIFs kind of walk you through what happens uh, when you pair your device and uh, some things and notes uh, if, you, if it's not working out. But for the most case, it works out pretty well. And hopefully, we'll get that out of beta someday. Um, shout out to the make code team for making a really, really nice um, features. So that's make code. It's linked in the description as well. Um, so you can check that out. All right, we're going to move on to community makes. How many Stygi Mullocks does it take to make a time lapse Tuesday? It <laughs> takes re one really big one. So this week, we time lapsed on Tuesday a really, really big Stygimelex dinosaur designed by Joe, the 3D printing professor. So this was printed on the Ultimaker S5, um, dual extruded. Here's the small version that we printed first and the really big version. Um, he's massive, simply really massive. Yeah, so this was really a test on seeing how big we can print on the Ultima Ultimaker S5. I actually didn't scale this up as big as it could have. I think it like maybe 50 millimeters short of what the max size of the bed was. Um, so we got to test out the, the 0.8 millimeter nozzles. Okay. And also, inadvertently, we got to test out the flow sensor for the filament since we did run out of blue That's somewhere right. at the top here. And it did a really good job of pausing, holding the heat on the bed. Overnight. And then letting us switch out the uh, blue color that we have. Uh, this is the neon blue. We switched it out for the... Aqua blue. Aqua blue. 
Yeah. And uh, pretty aggressive with the overhangs here, printing at 45 uh, the, the degrees. It actually prints upwards from the tail and did a really good job of being able to have it stand on its feet. Now let's do that right here, like that. So really good action poses already. Uh, he did not provide a dual extrusion model, so I had to actually go inside of um, Maya to edit all of the polygons to separate these out. For whatever reason, uh, Mesh Mixer was not able to separate any of these uh, as easily as Maya would let you do so. And then, uh, so yeah, a um, couple of tricks was lowering the wall thickness to 0.8 millimeters. Hmm. Um, and using a 0.3 millimeter layer, uh, layer height. height. Okay. So it cut it down from like you know, 30 hours down to 16 hours. Whoa, that's a lot. So we were able to save a lot of time on that. And of course- What's the um, infill? The infill is about 15%. 15? Uh, All right. It so feels pretty heavy. It's 400 it's yeah. grams. Mm -hmm. So half kilogram around. Oh yeah. So, so it's pretty heavy. To... Uh, definitely safe to allow a five-year-old to go ahead and play around with it since yeah. <laughs> one of the action moves is going to be for it to butt into uh, other things. Um, other than that, really good uh, low polygon model from Joe. Yeah. And if you want to switch over to the other hand, yeah, it's a very nice size. Whoops. Let me go <laughs> to this one, sir. It's a really nice size for having uh, uh, in terms of for play, for a kid, and of testing how big the... Uh, S5 was able to print with the yeah. dual extrusion. Yeah. Flow sensor, did a really excellent job on that. And as you can see from the video, the overhang did clean up pretty well. Yeah, I like the color, shapes are great. Mm -hmm. So this is from, again, Joel, Joe, uh, 3D printing professor. This is actually a part of a kickstarting campaign, which has already been um, backed. Oh, it's well it's exceeded. Well exceeded its expectations. Um, he's up to 30, nine dinos i want to say he's got a whole slew of them you can purchase them if you want the whole pack yeah he's up to 39 um uh Mullock is number 13 um so you can get the whole pack or purchase them individually or just back his kickstarter i think you can still do that um and he has live streams and videos of him 3D modeling this in Blender, which is an open source 3D modeling software. So check it out. All the info is on Joe's website and subscribe to him on YouTube. He's got some great videos. Let's check him out. Sweet. Continuing on with Community Makes, uh, I got this really neat one that came in this morning. This one is from Greg Zumwalt, who posted a comment on a reciprocating rack and pinion he also made a reciprocating rack and pinion mechanism on Thingiverse. This is a project that he put together called Disco Dan, the Dancing Man. And uh, Disco Dan is a 3D printed figure on a mount, and he is um, he's like mounted on the, the, the rack and pinion mechanism to go back and forth there. I really like how small he was able to get all the gears yeah. for this. Yeah, this is running just a regular uh, uh, DC toy motor. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's geared, it's just like direct. And what I like about this is that, although we didn't talk about it in the uh, prototyping segment, this looks like a future project that you're working on. Really cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So check it out, you can, you can create your own too. I think he has an instructable, yeah, using a, uh, a three volt DC power supply. And the gear motor from Pololu. Probably a really small one. Very cool. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, we got some time here. I'm going to just kind of walk through, so jumping in the Discord. We're hanging out there. And um, shout out to everybody there. We have some show and tells. Yeah, so just some quick comments from the YouTube chat. We're going through that. Mm -hmm. um, Yanni was checking out the Tinkercad to Fusion 360. Uh, feature that they added into your CAD. Yeah, like I, last week I think. I think I saw that as a headline. I didn't read too much into it. That's really cool. We have not tried it out, but yeah, it looks like it'd be very handy for doing like boolean oh, combinations that's where we saw or separation. We saw Donald Bell talk, showing it off in Maker it Update, yeah, and he yeah. took a, like a, 
like a bowl and he added a fillet to the bottom because it's so fusion. easy. He's like, well, there's a lot of times where I just want to add a fillet, mm -hmm. bring it into fusion, add my fillet and jump back out because you still can't really make a simple fillet. Oh, you can jump Tinker back Cad. into Tinkercad Maybe. after fusion? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That, that's what my EO was. Uh, right. And then we have uh, Imagination Forum saying that he is looking into getting the point eight millimeter nozzle. Yes, yeah. definitely recommend them. It really is great. so handy for uh, huge giant projects. Um, yep. There's actually no, uh, you should waste all that time if a bigger nozzle can handle the job a lot more better. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the opposite side of that, we also like the 0.25 millimeter nozzle absolutely, yeah. for smaller, detailed uh, projects like the Lego one last Lego, week. Absolutely, Lego. The studs. studs Tubes all came out way better using mm -hmm. a smaller, uh, detailed nozzle. That's right. But definitely look into those two. And if your printer supports the, the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, is pretty good as well. Nice little balance mm. between both. Yeah, you get some more detail out of it. You get a little, little bit more detail out of it. Cool. We got some really neat robots here. Um, here's a project on Hackaday, Twitch playing battle robots. It's really cool. We got some screenshots here. Folks are working on maybe optimizing stuff. What is this? Arduino calculator. Animal. Yep. Some like cool a stuff here. VCR. We got some PCB designs happening here, like Blinka mm. design for Circuit Python. Very cool. There's That's some neat little, little um, PCB designs. That's so cute. I love it. It's <laughs> great. We got this really neat um, Ooh, watch demo. Circuit uh, Python watch demo. We got some more stuff over here from Caitlin's dad. Mm -hmm. The electronic price tags. Talk about these. Mm -hmm. Talk about this really cool retro game. Oh, wow. It looks like a Pi TFT. Just um, mounted right on top, on top of a Logitech's gamepad. Yeah, very cool. very cool. Got some schematic happening over here. This is a really great uh, place to kind of get inspiration Neon and share design. your projects. It's really cool. And then working on some really cool uh, pony stuff here. Hmm. Really neat um, details. And, and, um, what would you call it? The art of this bending. This is uh, perfect for segueing into. Uh, I actually definitely got to close it out. Um, we got like a couple minutes. We got to. Okay, we got to go. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, awesome. I wish we could go Check through all out. the projects. Um, there's a lot some of great links here. Stuff. Spend a little bit of time this here and share your projects with us. And if you really want us to post it on the blog, you can reach us at support at Just mm -hmm. put a subject line of. Uh, of. Uh, on a cool thing for the blog. Yeah, to do. <laughs> cool thing for blog. Yes. A great one. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us again. Don't forget the coupon code is GearHead. You can use that. Tonight we have Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell. We'll be on Show and Tell, um, right? Or two more mm -hmm. No. Okay. So and then tomorrow is uh, John Park at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursdays. You can watch John Park um, with Make Code Minutes and and more. Yep. Thank you. Guys yep. working on some of those projects you might have saw in the yeah. Discord Show and yeah. Tell. Yeah. So I think tune in for that. Thank you guys stuff. so much for, for supporting Adafruit. Um, it helps everybody out but with your support. So mm -hmm. if you want to keep on supporting, buy a kit every now and then. You can use coupon code KIRGAD. There's another one tonight, too. So and there will be one more tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, we got to run. But thank you guys so much. Good luck with all of your maker projects. And then don't forget to make a great day. We'll leave you with the print fail. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Bye.